And the first dish we're going to make is a ziti dish with a lambrusco wine, which is a typical wine of the region. So I've got some ziti cooking in a pot, but right here, I am cooking down some pancetta. This is about a quarter of a pound of pancetta with a little bit of butter. And you dice it up and you cook it until it's crispy. And this is what pancetta looks like when you buy it in the grocery store. And you want to make sure there's a nice ratio of fat to the meat. This is Italian bacon. And if this looks very yellowish, well, then you don't want to buy that. So that's going to be our flavoring agent. And now I'm going to add the garlic, two cloves of garlic to the pan. And that's going to give us added flavor. And here are ziti, in case you don't know what ziti look like. This is just a semolina and water pasta. And you can find that anywhere. And you can buy ziti with lines like this, and it'll be called penne or ziti regate. So you can use this, or if you can't find ziti, you could use penne. So let me stir the garlic around now because we want to get this going. This is going to be our sauce. And with this, we want to give a little bit of pepper, not too much, and just a little pinch of salt because we have salt in the pancetta. And you really want that to be nice and crispy. Now, after that softens down, after you've got the garlic soft, well, then you can add the wine. And I want to add some parsley with this now. So here is. Just good old fashioned Italian flat leaf parsley. You always want to cook with flat leaf because that is going to give you the best flavor. So here is our parsley and that's going to go in now with the garlic and the pancetta. This is a really easy, fast recipe. So we'll stir this around. And now we are ready for that wine. We want about two cups of Lambrusco wine. Wonderful wine that's perfect for the hearty dishes of Emilia Romagna. So we want about two cups. And you can see, as I'm putting this in, that this is a fizzy wine, or what we call frizzante. Now this we have to allow to reduce. We have to allow this to cook down some, because we want that to thicken up a little bit. I'm going to put just a little bit more in there. And now turn up the heat on that. So we want this to thicken. So when you cook pasta, of course, you want to start in a large pasta pot, something that will hold at least four to six quarts of water. This is the problem that a lot of people make. They think they can cook pasta in a little bit of water, and then they wonder why their pasta sticks together. It sticks together because you haven't used enough water to begin with. And then you bring this to a boil, and you check a few minutes later to see if the pasta is cooked. And you'll know it's cooked by taking a piece of it and just breaking it in half, you see? And looking inside the pasta to see if you can see any white flour. And if you do, you know that that pasta is not cooked, but this is. So we're ready to take it out. So we're going to take it right into our pan, our sauce here, which is cooking down nicely. Look at how fast this is. So I'm going to take the pasta out now. So I'm going to turn this off. And this is going to serve between six to eight people. So you take it out of the water. And this is why this is such a handy pot to have, because if you have this insert, it makes it very easy to transfer it to a pot of sauce that you have on the stove. So in it goes. And now we want to give this a stir. Stir it all up. I wish you could smell this Lambrusco wine. And we're going to serve the very same wine with the dish when we bring it to the table. So stir it around. Make sure it's all well blended with your sauce. And then you can take it out. So I'm going to turn this off now. And we're going to put it into a beautiful platter or a bowl. But first I'm going to give it some Parmigiano and Reggiano cheese. So now we take all of this into our bowl, just like that, and we toss. Now how fast is this? You're having company? If you got a bottle of Brambrusco, you are all set. Look at how beautiful that looks. 
and it's all ready to go. And all we have to do now is give that a little bit more parmigiano or reggiano over the top. I hope your mouth is salivating because mine sure is.